for 30 years, <laughs> you've been creating virtual worlds. What, what's it like evolving a game engine for those 30 years when they're when the hardware under you is, is is improving exponentially. What are some things that changed and what are some universal truths that have not changed? It's been an astonishing experience. Nobody 30 years ago had anticipated that we'd see the performance gains in hardware that we've actually seen in that time frame. It's something like 100,000 times higher CPU performance between multiple cores and higher clock rates and more parallelism. You know, if if we had wow. that in aviation, then we'd be like taking a trip to <laughs> neighboring stars. Alpha Centauri, yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, <laughs> in in graphics, it's been been even more so. It's something like literally ten million times more net usable GPU performance than we had uh, back running on a Pentium ninety CPU, um, all in thirty years. And um, you know, it's really made me appreciate that over the generations, some areas of our engine development have absolutely kept up with tech technology. Um, and you know, the the rendering team that works on Unreal Engine are the real miracle workers there. Just about every generation of Unreal, uh, we've replaced most of the rendering code, um, and you know, the the different leaders in different points in times and the different luminaries have built systems that were absolutely rethought um, and optimized for the latest generation of hardware. You know, Unreal Engine 1 was built for software rendering, and then the Voodoo 1 came along late in the cycle, and we had support for it, but it wasn't fully fully capable and utilized. Um, Unreal Engine 2 was about bringing all the latest GPU hardware acceleration features to the engine and, you know, keeping forward and building some new features like vehicles um, and a few other capabilities. Um, uh, this And this was in the early GPU era, before GPUs had really broken out of uh, you know everybody's expectations of Moore's Law. But that breakout occurred uh, with DirectX 9 um, and the capabilities of you know programmable shaders. Once you had control of writing code running on the GPU uh, that could uh, color every pixel on the screen, and that GPU code was literally a factor of 100 times faster uh, than the equivalent code I wrote a few years <laughs> earlier on the Pentium 90. Um, yeah. And so that DirectX 9 generation was a a godsend, and um, Andrew Scheidecker, a uh, longtime Epic Luminary, wrote the core of the Unreal Engine 3 render around um, real-time pixel shading, um, real-time lighting, being able to do dynamic shadows using several different techniques, um, and multi-thread the render to support uh, bits of uh, you know the early dual-core dual core CPUs that were starting to show up at the time. Um, and it was a massive, massive graphical upgrade. Um, uh, Unreal Engine 4 made a number of uh, improvements and just continued to add features to make more and more, give artists more and more op options for lighting and for geometry that uh, created realism. Um, but then I think probably our, bi our biggest single level of uh, leap came with Unreal Engine 5 with a nanite micropolygon geometry uh, solution and with Lumen, the global illumination lighting solution, um, you know, which which I think really bridged the gap, gap from, you know, game game-ish computer graphics to, you know, total observable photorealism um, for artists who wanted to create that. Um, and, and so that's been the evolution, and the, the progress on the graphics side is absolutely astonishing, as it is on the audio side and a number of other areas. But parts of the engine also haven't changed all that much since the version I wrote um, and shipped in 1998. Um, you know, uh, the file management system has been optimized a number of times, but it hasn't been completely rethought. Um, and the networking system, the, the ways uh, that uh, clients and servers talk together and negotiate game state uh, is still an evolution of the thing I wrote. Um, and, you know, it's feeling kind of dated now. Uh, you still see networking bugs in Fortnite where, like, for some reason, when you're spectating, you're not seeing some parameters update. Well, that's uh, that's because of the loss lossful nature of that networking model. And uh, you know, and the biggest limitation that's built up over time is the si single-threaded nature of game simulation in Unreal Engine. We run a single-threaded simulation. You know, if you have a 16-core CPU, we're using one core for game simulation um, and running most of the complicated game logic because single-thread programming is orders of magnitude easier than multi-thread programming. And we didn't want to burden either ourselves or our partners or the community with the complications of multi-threading. Um, and, you know, over time, that becomes an increasing limitation. You know, so we're really thinking about and working on the next genera 
good generation of technology and that, you know, being on your engine six. And that's the generation where we're actually going to go and address a number of the really core limitations that have been with us over the history of Unreal Engine and and get those on the, you know, a better foundation that um, you know, the modern world deserves, uh, given everything that's been learned in the field of computing in that time frame. That's a terrifyingly challenging uh, engineering problem. And it seems like every version of Unreal Engine, um, the amazing teams behind it are willing to just throw away most of the code. <laughs> or uh, maybe I'm being a little bit too dramatic, but basically throw away the the old approaches like you mentioned with Carmack and uh, start again, like like with Nanite and Lumen, just keep keep uh, optimizing to the current hardware, but even like rethinking how it's all done. But <laughs> going from single-threaded to multi-threaded, oh boy, that's terrifying. And that's in part, we'll talk about it, why maybe you have to uh, rethink the, even the programming language that's being used, um, to rethink a lot of things. <laughs> that's fascinating. 